What's poppin' Wolfpack? I'm Matthew Wing. And I'm Ashley Borton. Today is January 3rd, and we are here with your Wolfpack news. Here's John with sports. What's up, Wolfpack? I'm John Sheehan, back at it again with your weekly sports update. This week had a cool interview with the California State Assemblyman, Jim Cooper, so let's jump right into it. We want to thank you for signing on to the resolution for Let Them Play California. As you know, student-athletes in Elk Grove Unified School District haven't been participating in school sports since March of 2020. It was important to student-athletes that they know you support their desire to return to the courts and the fields. So, Mr. Cooper, other than me reaching out to you and asking for your support, what made you decide to support the Let Them Play resolution in efforts to return high school sports this year? Let Them Play is a big deal. It's important to me. And, and one of the things, my daughter played high school softball. Um, she played for Sheldon High School and got a scholarship to Arizona State. So it's important to go out there. And, and high school is kind of your notoriety where you get player, you know, league, all league or player of the year, things like that. It's important. And these kids do that. And some kids do get scholarships. You know, a lot don't, but some do. And by it being a lockdown, it, it hurt a lot of kids. They're able to be seen or play sports. So let them play. I don't think that, you know, with the proper precautions, um, not, the, the spread of COVID is not going to be any more uh, prevalent with that. So let the kids play and do their thing. And also the mental health aspect. You're out there with your friends. You're having a good time, getting exercise. That's important. A lot of kids are depressed right now. And folks have never gone through this where you can't see your friends. You're, you're pretty much not in school right now. And it's, it's unfair. So I support Let It Play. I understand you attended Cordova High School in Rancho Cordova. Did you play high school sports? And if so, what was your favorite memory? I'm going to talk smack. So I went to Cordova High School, and when I went there, we were the number one ranked high school football team in the country. So we were an amazing team, and we were in the wishbone out of Oklahoma. And uh, we, had, uh, uh, back then it was the Parade Magazine Player of the Year in Kevin Wilhite. We were the best. We were in the Metro League, so you had Burbank, Johnson, Kennedy, McClatchy, Sac High, we never lost to Metro schools. Although we did lose to Christian Brothers. So I, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of Brothers. Or, I like Brothers, but yeah, but you know. But uh, we were a great team and great players. And that really, I think we had some great coaches that um, you got discipline to just how to, how to work hard and have a good work ethic. And that's really served me well my entire life. I understand you have two daughters who attended Laguna Creek and Sheldon High School. Did they play sports or involve themselves in any extracurricular activities? Well, my daughters were always involved in sports. I, I coached them. I coached them in soccer, basketball, softball. One was a cheerleader, so from the time they were four or five years old up until they graduated from high school, and then one um, played college ball. So, yeah, I believe in sports. Um, I, my my oldest, my youngest one, or my middle one, the, her memory was. Uh, they were, they were, it was the last game of the season. They were playing UCLA, and uh, she's a pitcher. So the, they were down nine runs in the first inning. She came in in relief and won that uh, final game um, for uh, ASU. And it was a senior's day, too. So the seniors got to go out and win. So that was fun traveling to Arizona and, and seeing her play softball. So that was cool. My other daughter cheerleaded and played softball, too. So. Do you have any closing comments you would like to make to our student athletes who are, for the most part, missing two years of high school sports due to actions taken in response to the coronavirus? I know it's been tough on the athletes for, for the past, God, for the past year with, with no sports and things being shut down, especially for you seniors that um, you kind of got robbed of your senior year. Uh, but it's one of those things, it's going to make you a stronger person and just perseverance. Uh, you got through this and you're going to get through other things. This is a small blip. and. You know, high school sports are important. I, I get it. I played it. I loved it. And uh, I understand your passion for it. Um, but at some point, you have to move on, and, and there are other things in life, and you have a long ways to go. Life it, life is a marathon, not a sprint. And this is just one small clip, and you look back on it. And, yeah, it, it, uh, it, it's not fun. It's kind of a bitter taste. But you have big, bigger and better things to accomplish. So just think about that. And good luck. Good luck in the world. And you guys will succeed as long as you have that fortitude and you believe in yourself. Uh, it's going to happen. Your mom and dad can't believe in it or want it for you. You have to want it. You got to have a fire in your belly, kind of like playing sports. That you just you do all the hard work and put the effort in. Do that in life, and you'll be successful. Thank you for your time and good luck on your future, whether that will be with the California Assembly or as Sacramento's first African American sheriff. Thank you, Mr. Jim Cooper. Thank you, John. Next up, we have a new thing about Trump brought to you by Sienna. 
Hey, Wolf Pack, it's Josiah Edwards, and I'm here to tell you more about the Trump supporter attack. On January 6, 2021, on her morning walk home, Berlinda Nympho was attacked by a group of Trump supporters during the L.A. protest. It was investigated and proclaimed as a hate crime. Photographer Raquel Natalincho was on the scene when it all went down, taking pictures of the crime as it was in motion. She was later able to add more backstory on what happened that morning. As Nibbo was walking by herself, she heard the protesters aggressively ask if she voted for President Donald Trump. She told them no, flipped them off, and kept walking. The protesters continued to harass her, and she told them to put on a mask. Upset by this comment, the protesters swarmed and circled her and began to push her amongst them. The woman and men started yelling, take off your mask, don't wear a mask. She has one man in the group to leave her alone. He clawed her in the face and smacked her phone to her face. Nympho said that the others began shoving her and calling her racial slurs. A woman snatched Nympho's hair extensions out. As Nympho tried to defend herself, several men with metal flagpoles began beating her. It was later said that she was pepper sprayed in the eyes. That's all I have for today, Wolfpack. Back to you, Anchor. Thanks, Sienna. Between the 8th and 10th of February, Valentine Grams will take place. A link will come on February 8th through Student View and the Valentine Grimms will be sent out on the 12th. COHS would like to honor our counseling team for the hard work they do every day in supporting students academically and socio-emotionally. In order to show our appreciation, we are asking COHS families and staff to add a message on the following Padlet. That is all we have for you today, Wolfpack. I'm Ashley Borton. And I'm Matthew Wing. Remember, the strength of the wolf is the pack. And the strength of the pack is the wolf. Have a good one, Wolfpack.